So I like using the bilateral lung sliding. I don't uh, watch in real time as much as Rich does, but I'm going to start incorporating that more and more often to watch the tube go in. Um, that's going to be challenging if you're in a community setting with just one provider because you're probably the only one that's very good at ultrasound and you're probably the one that's intubating and therefore it's going to be more of a challenge to use that as a confirmation. But lung sliding is something you should probably be routinely doing because it's so much quicker than chest x-ray and some of the sickest folks really can't take the five to ten minutes to get the tech in the room and get the x-ray shot and all that uh, of only aerating one side of their of their thorax. I would strongly suggest that the way to confirm airway placement is somewhat similar to what we've been doing for many, many, many years. Ideally, watching the tube under direct vision go through the cords would be the gold standard. Secondly, in tidal CO2, and of course, simply listening to breath sounds, which usually you can do in the ED even when it's relatively loud, although it can be somewhat challenging. Um, I do think that ultrasound plays a role, and I think it should be in your bag of tricks, but I certainly don't think it should be the primary thing you're using to confirm airway placement. That's just my opinion. And I think Steve's exactly right. The, the more ways that you use to confirm this that are different, the better. Like the difference between lung sliding and bilateral lung auscultation is probably very similar. But you're testing a fundamentally different thing with directly watching it go through the cords. You're testing a fundamentally different thing by watching capnography, preferably continuous capnography and not just the colorimetric. The more different ways that you're confirming that that tube is where it belongs and that more importantly, it stays where it belongs. Um, because just because you put it in there initially and the taping and moving and sliding of patients around, very common for that, that tube that wasn't a good place to move somewhere. So, so be cautious with that and as Steve said, use as many different modes as you can. And any of the techniques can be misinterpreted. So, I mean, you have to look at the clinical status of the patient. I mean, if, if the patient is not oxygenating or you can't ventilate the patient and you think you've had the tube in the right position, then you need to reevaluate. And you can't just blindly assume because you've done one of these things that the tube's automatically in the, in the right position without, I mean, sometimes you just have to, to do what needs to be done. And sometimes that's removing the tube or looking at it, you know, again, et cetera. You have to reassess. And I, I agree with Steve. I actually would, I'll say, as much as I like ultrasound, I think it's useful for a lot of things, I don't think it's probably part of, at, I mean, at this point, going to be part of my routine airway, initial airway management um, because of all the other adjuncts we have and that most of them work pretty well. So I will say I don't, you know, if, if we have a routine intubation and you're using video and you see, you know, you're the you see the tube go through the cords and then the attending sees the tube go through the cords. I'm not that worried that we're in the wrong place, especially if you have continuous wave end tidal CO2. But where ultrasound is very helpful is if things start to go bad quickly or you're in a crash situation where, you know, x-ray is not right there, that's where I find it very helpful. If you run into problems, you think you did things right and you're running into problems, that's a really helpful way to use ultrasound in my opinion. Then I start looking for lung sliding, confirm tube placement, try to figure out if there's something else going on. And a lot of the stuff I can't see visually by looking in the mouth, I can see by ultrasound. So I find that more helpful where you run into a problem and you can't get another, if you can't get a uh, solution otherwise. But you have to practice it. You can't do it only in your crash situations as you're training. So you have to be comfortable being able to do it quickly and make a decision. So it's worthwhile practicing that on intubated patients, but in general, that's not kind of my go-to in my routine intubation. And that's the, the very reason that you mentioned there, if you don't want to do it when it's a crash patient, is the reason I like doing it most routinely. But I think, Dan, you're, I think you're exactly right, that in that easy intubation, everyone saw it go through the cords, it's unlikely that it's anywhere else. I think it's almost more getting the reps of, of getting used to checking bilateral lung sliding and so forth that, that's really a value. My, I guess my overall concern about this in general is I think with, as, you know, as I said, with ultrasound, I think sometimes as residents, you guys get the sense that we think the ultrasound should be in the room all the time on every patient. And it, I, I, sometimes I think it's overwhelming to say, okay, so you basically think everything I do, I should be ultrasounding something. And I don't, I think that sometimes the reaction to some people is that's great. I want to do that. And other people are like, I'm never going to do this. This just, you guys keep adding more stuff that I have to learn that I would never do in the community. And so I want, I don't want you to get the sense that this is, you know, you have to be using ultrasound for everything. There's a lot of stuff you can do that you don't need ultrasound for. But if you're going to incorporate it routinely into your practice, you have to get used to doing it 
in low pressure situations so you can make those decisions quickly when you, act, when you actually really need it. So let's silence that heresy and uh, move on to the next topic. I, I'm just kidding, Dan. I think you're right. <laughs> For the ultrasound and routine intubations, I think using ultrasound to confirm tube placement or routine indications is a procedure looking for an indication. Ooh, shots fired. 